We're now going to discuss Poynting's theorem for the gap between the plates of a capacitor. So we're assuming that we have a capacitor um, with a time-varying field between the plates. Um, e of t. So let's just draw this. We're going to specify um, that we have a z-axis up here. We'll have a current, a wire coming in, and there's going to be a plate at the top here. There'll be another plate at the bottom there, and another wire going out. Um, we'll have a gap between the plates, which is H, and we'll have a radius of the plates of A. Um, as usual, we'll be working with cylindrical polar coordinates. Um, and notice that we want a slowly varying field. Um, and we're not going to specify what the field is. If you wanted to, you could think of it as being Q over epsilon of A, where Q is varying, say, with some kind of cosine. Um, but that's not actually important. What we're going to be looking at here is a situation where there is no work done. Um, so there is no current density oops, excuse me, um, between the plates. Um, So j is equal to 0, which of course implies that p, which is equal to the volume integral of e dot j, is going to equal 0. So when we think about Poynting's vector, this tells us that the only terms we're concerned about are the energy density in the field and the, um, the flow of energy, so Poynting's vector itself. We have the electric field. What about the magnetic field? Um, well, we're just going to use Ampere's law, well, the Ampere-Maxwell equation, actually. I'm going to say that the curl of B um, is equal to epsilon naught mu naught dE by dt. There's no current density J. Um, if we decide to, we're going to do a surface integral. Um, let me just draw the surface that we're going to use here. It's going to be a circular surface. It's going to lie between the plates, and it's going to have the same radius um, as the plates themselves. So that's our surface S. Um, actually, let me put the, the label S here, and then we're going to have the, the contour that goes around it, the line that goes around it as C. We're going to do um, Stokes' theorem. So we say that the closed line integral of B dot dl is going to equal to epsilon naught mu naught pi A squared. That's the surface area. Um, e by dt, and you'll notice that I've lost the direction on e. Um, so e itself lies along z. So when we take the dot product between um, e and the normal to the surface, that just gives us a 1. Um, so we don't need to worry about the directions there. e itself is uniform. We're ignoring the effects at the edge of the capacitor plates. Therefore, we just multiply e by the surface area. B itself, we can say simply from geometry, is going to be in the, the phi direction, the angular direction. Um, the loop, the line integral, is also in that direction. So therefore, the left-hand side becomes B multiplied by 2 pi A. Um, and that's going to equal epsilon naught mu naught pi A squared D by dt. So we can now write, if we want to, B itself, in the direction, is equal to epsilon naught mu naught, the pi's will cancel, we have an a over 2, and we have a dE by dt, and it's in the phi direction. That, of course, tells us that the H field is going to equal epsilon naught a over 2 dE by dt in the phi direction. Let's now think about um, the pointing vector. So n, which is equal to E crossed with H, is going to equal e times epsilon naught a over 2 dE by dt. Um, and then the direction is going to be, um, as we had in the previous example, it's going to be z crossed with phi. So therefore, we have minus epsilon naught a over 2 e dE by dt r. Because again, what we find is that the energy is flowing into the gap between the plates. It's 
flowing radially inwards um, according to the pointing vector. Now let's go back to our standard equation for the power, so P which is equal to the volume integral of E dot J dV, which we have already said is equal to zero, is then equal to minus the closed surface integral of N dot dS, that's the energy flowing into the surface, minus d by dt of the volume integral of u, the energy density. Now the energy density, u in this case, um, is just going to be given by a half epsilon naught e squared, um, because that's considering the density across the entirety of the center of the capacitor. Um, there's no contribution from the B field. So now we just need to see if those two match. Um, so what we have is minus the closed surface integral of n dot ds is equal to d by dt of the volume integral of a half epsilon naught e squared dv. Now let's think about the surface that we're considering for um, the, which, sorry, the surface which bounds the volume, and if I sketch that over here, what we're going to have is, I don't know why it keeps changing, um, so we're going to have a, a volume which is basically a small cylinder, so it's going to have a height h, it's going to have pi a squared on top and bottom, but thinking about the, the pointing vector, the top and the bottom are not going to contribute at all, it's only the cylindrical surface edges that contribute, and so the surface area of that cylindrical edge um, is just 2 pi a, the circumference, multiplied by h. So we find the following. We have epsilon naught a over 2 e dE by dt. That's the magnitude of the pointing vector. The minus signs cancel. We multiply that by h times 2 pi a. That's the surface area. And that is equal to d by dt of a half epsilon naught e squared multiplied by the volume, which is pi a squared h. Let's do a little bit of simplification here. We've got, an, on the left hand side, we have an epsilon naught pi a squared h, um, and then we have an e and a dE by dt term, and that's equal to d by dt of a half, actually, no, sorry, I'm gonna, I need to start taking some differentials here, don't I? Um, that's going to equal epsilon naught. Now d by dt of e squared is just 2 e dE by dt, and the 2 cancels with a half, so we've got an e dE by dt, and then we have a pi a squared h. So the two sides of the equation match. We have conservation of energy in this case. Um, so this situation, we're not doing any work because there's no current flowing, there's no um, current density and the gap between the plates. And so in that gap between the plates, we have only a balance between the energy flowing in and the energy density stored in the fields. This is in contrast to the current carrying wire where the fields weren't changing, so the stored energy wasn't changing, um, and all of the work that was done was being expressed in terms of energy flow. Of course, Normal, um, well, when I say normal, calculations of more complicated problems involve both work done, energy stored, and energy flow. But these two examples give you two, two either ends of that spectrum.